the heart of a woman. Before we get into our spiritual meal, I got a little funny for you. And this is by way of our Alan Wallace Jr. He sent it to me. It says that a judge, a woman went before the judge and the judge said, ma'am, you're gonna represent yourself? And she said, uh, yes, I am. And so the judge said, okay, what are the grounds for your divorce? She said, seven acres and a barn. He said, no, 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 no. What is the foundation of your case? She said, grass, dirt, and rocks. The judge said, no, 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 Lord, help me. The judge said, ma'am, does your husband beat you up? She said, yeah, he get up at 4 a.m. and I get up at 8. <laughs> he said, oh, my God. He said, what in the world? He said, just forget it. He said, why do you want a divorce? She said, I don't want a divorce. She said, my husband wants one. He said, because I have communication skill problems. <laughs> The heart of a woman. And then chapter four, soul in our text. And I will reference Luke. Luke, for the metaphysical terms, it means light giving. It says, when we cease clinging to the outside, the spiritual has space, space within to be. Luke 145 through 47 says, blessed is she who believed in the Lord that will fulfill the promise. That's the heart of God. It said, Mary said that each of us, our soul, what I, we have developed out of our understanding and impressions received from the outer world. Our interpretation and movement going forward. Blessed is she who believe in the Lord that will fulfill the promise. We are not only celebrating our theme, the heart of a woman, we are celebrating our mothers and all mothers. Curtis Mayfield said this, with a, I'm gonna say it with a, a, with a metaphysical twist. It says, people get ready. There's a train a coming. And what that means is a new thought, a new experience, a new movement a new relationship, a new job offer, a new ministry. There's a train a coming, a new family dynamic. It says, don't need no ticket, just get on board. For all you need is faith to hear the diesel humming. Don't need no ticket, we just thank the Lord. Train symbolizes the departure of the old. Unconscious thought, where a new development can begin. The beginning of a new spiritual endeavor are at the door of our consciousness. So open the door of your mind and allow the new to have a seat. Did you get that? Open the door. There's a train a coming. There's a blessing a coming. There's a healing coming. But you have to be prepared. And you don't need no ticket. All you need is faith. The old, release it. And we have that opportunity every moment of every day. It's at the door of your consciousness. All we have to do is open the door of our mind and allow the new to have a seat. Sit at the seat of your consciousness with a new idea. All you need is faith to hear God's voice. That's the humming, that still small voice. It's humming within us every moment of every day. But if we just quiet ourselves down, we can hear. Not with this ear, but your spiritual ear. To celebrate Mother's Day is to celebrate birth mothers. Mothers who continue to reside on this earth journey who have experienced their child moving on. To the next experience. We're celebrating grandmothers, great grandmothers, as well as great great grandmothers and beyond. To celebrating stepmoms, godmothers, foster mothers, adoptive mothers, spiritual mothers, fathers who have taken on the role 
utilizing their feminine aspect, the heart, the nurturing, the compassionate aspect, that intuitive nature to be caregivers and to take care of. So see, we're not talking about gender. We're talking about an aspect, the feminine aspect, which all of us have, men and women. There's a part of us. We have that wisdom, which is that masculine, that power, the execution of an idea. And then we have that nurturing, loving aspect of us. And when you look at the family dynamics, when you have the mother and the father, the father is strict and tell you to do this and to do that. And then the mother with her love and nurturing, oh, baby, come on. It's OK. It's going to be all right. But we're talking about that feminine aspect. And I think men weren't taught to utilize theirs to the fullest. Because when they were little boys, five and six, and they started to cry, they would, the uncles and fathers would punch them in the chest and tell them to suck it up because they thought that releasing tears made you weak. But no, since God gave us all tear ducts, I'm thinking we're supposed to use them. <laughs> Everybody has emotions. Everybody has sadness at some time. And the way to release that emotion that anger sometimes is to, with tears. We can have tears of sadness and tears of joy. So men, get in contact with your feminine aspect. It's all right. <laughs> We're celebrating that feminine aspect. This celebration, this theme is not limited to its gender. It's about our God-given powers. And when utilized divinely represents the presence and faith in our creator. Each woman, each man contains within it the feminine aspect and the masculine aspect. And it's referring to us looking deeper. The two fold attributes of all of God's creative ingredients. We are so good at separating this from that. But our creator created all together. And that's when we talk about unity. We're always dividing up things and separating people and situations. But when we bring it all to the altar, then the Spirit of God can alter what needs to be altered. Amen? Amen? All over the world, during this time, we gather in family homes, restaurants. We give flowers, gifts of all kinds to show our love and appreciation for the mother qualities. All of those sentiments are beautiful. But if we can express our unconditional love at every opportunity availed, we then can build our spiritual love muscle. So we shouldn't wait. And my husband taught me this when Mother's Day came and birthdays came and I didn't get no card or nothing. <laughs> I've told y'all before, he said, don't no calendar dictate how I'm going to spend my money and what I'm going to do. So it had me to appreciate the times when it was unexpected and he brought in a card or some flowers. So we don't need a date on the calendar to show love and to bring flowers. Because, you know, Hallmark is having a field day with us. <laughs> the flower shops, that's what they're waiting on. There's nothing wrong with supporting, but we have to think deeper and give the love every single day. And it doesn't have to mean digging deep in your pocket. Because love is right here. And we can give it every moment of every day. We don't have to get angry unless we choose to. That's a choice. People can't get on your nerve unless you allow it. People don't make you angry, you decide to get angry. Everything that we do is first a choice, a decision. It's a thinking about a thing. It's not about what happens to you. It's about what you think about and what you do about what has happened. Because we can't stop things from happening in our lives. We have no control over nobody else but self. And it's going to take every year that we take a breath on this earth to get ourselves in check. Even a two-year-old don't obey us. <laughs> you tell them, don't touch that. Go sit down over there. They do what they want to do. So why are you trying to control a grown person? 
when you got work to do on self. Every breath we take, every day that we're given is to get self right with God. It's to lift yourself up. It's to be inspired by the word, by truth. That's what this life journey, that's what this earth walk is all about. Because we will never exhaust or limit the presence and power of God. So we should spend every moment trying to touch that hymn. Amen? Amen. Mm. The heart of God operating through our individual heart space. Not my limited love. I got to use God to give real, true love. Because when we depend on ourselves, we're limited. We do it conditionally. If you do that for me, then I'll love you. I'll call you. I'll thank you. So I don't trust myself. I need God to guide me. So we have to give true love because the universe, the atmosphere knows when it's not real. See all these little hugs like this? <laughs> that ain't real. That's just an act. A physical act that we do to make people think. But when we can truly give love from our true center, from the soul of who we are, that's when the atmosphere, the cities, the states, the countries, and the world will change. See, it's too much fake love going around here, and that's why we see all of these wars and all of this that's going on. Because, see, you can't fool the universe. And God knows us by our hearts. See, we can say anything. We can even be persuaded to think certain things. But what truly is real is what you feel in your heart. And that's why we got to nurture it. The heart of a woman. The heart of nurturing, compassionate Love, real. It's a song called Real Love. And that's what we need, God's love, because it's real. It changes not. All of God's kids act up at some time, but God still loves us the same, and we have the opportunity to get back on track at any time. God doesn't hold us hostage like we do some people. How can you not call relatives that live two blocks from you? for five, six, seven years, because you're holding on to that. And do you know what holding on to that does to you? Hmm. God's love operating through me, because we've been through some stuff, and we hold on to some stuff. And so that taints and obstructs thinking right, productive thoughts. When you hold on to stuff, you're unable because you got barricades in the mind to think cleanly and purely. You're unable. And that's why you're supposed to release that that does not serve you so that you open up your mind channels that the wisdom of God can flow through. In chapter 4, Ernest Holmes says, the feminine principle, universal soul, the true inner womb, the womb of nature, the holy mother, which is the receptor of spirit, the soil, receive, receptive to the seed. So when we plant a seed in a soil, that soil receives that seed and then nurtures it. And then that seed cracks open and becomes what it was designed to do. So it is with consciousness, so it is with our heart center, so it is with our soul. We are receptive. And so whatever is planted and you catch it and hold on to it like the soil holds on to the seed, something's going to crack open. <laughs> you get to decide what's going to crack open and be. Amen? God gave us that choice, dominion and choice to decide. And yes, some things come along, but that's okay. We are equipped to deal with it all. God gave us everything we need to deal with whatever comes out of the outer. Why? Because our inner is more powerful 
than the outer. The inner has created all of that that's in the outer. Hmm. We misuse the power of God. When our heart is heavy, filled with pain, resentment, regret, hurt, and we play those sad movies over and over again. How many times have you told that same story that hurt you so bad? You know what he did, you know what she did. <laughs> That's like just playing that same movie over and over and sitting there with a box of tissue just crying or a gallon of ice cream just eating. That ain't gonna do it. There's something deeper within us that can conquer any hurt, pain, regret, mistreatment. Hurt people hurt people. And it's up to us if a hurt person, a disturbed person, an angry person come into our experience, we should have nurtured ourselves enough to be love, light, and peace. Because what did Jesus say? Peace be still. So that's why you got to study. That's why we pray. That's why we meditate. That's why we affirm and declare so that we're building our light up. That when those people do come, and they're usually the closest ones to you, you have enough peace and light to share some. So put some light on that darkness. Yes, Lord, thank you. The mind becomes clouded with past hurts. The feminine principle of nature in action. God continuously provides, gives all of his creations whatever they need. You know, a closed mouth don't get fed. So you need to speak your word. And then trust the universe to give to you what you've asked for. That's what this whole earth walk is all about. The heart of us speaks and it's done according to our faith and belief. Now last month we uh, celebrated Lent. And I read something, we should always be celebrating Lent, but a writer gave an acronym that I like. Lent, L-E-N-T, let's eliminate negative thinking. So we should be celebrating Lent all the time. Eliminating negative thoughts about a person, place, or circumstance, or situation. When you think negatively, you attract negativity. That is the awesome power of the mind. When you confront the world with negative thoughts, you will have experiences to confirm what you are thinking. Thought to experience, that is the process. It is not the other way around. What you believe people and the world are doing to you is actually a reflection of what your thoughts are drawing to you. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. What we believe, we are attracting. If you want to free yourself from the harshness of the world, clear harsh thoughts from your mind. Clear anger with forgiveness, confusion with orderly thinking. Clear restriction with an open mind, violence with peaceful thoughts. Clear denial and with acceptance, hate with thoughts of love. When you clear what you do not want from the recesses of your mind, it will miraculously disappear from your life. So you're thinking that it's outer, that it's this person, that it's that circumstance, that it was my mother who didn't take care of me or my father who left. No, it's what you're thinking about that. And as long as we're carrying that heavy luggage, life's going to look heavy and feel heavy. With all of that, the heart is not open to give or receive unconditional love when we're holding on to all of that past stuff. This is a new opportunity. You've never had this opportunity this moment before, have you? <laughs> so what are you going to do in your newness? As the day go on, what thoughts are you going to think? As tomorrow come, what thoughts are you going to think? As you lay your head down and wake up in the morning, what thoughts are you going to think? Because that's going to determine what's coming in your experience. The soul of us is receiving all of those prompters. The soul of you, whatever is going on in life, the soul is bearing witness. So why not make it a good day, regardless 
of what comes and who comes and what we hear on the news. Why not make it a good day? We have that choice. We have the power to do so. Mother's Day was an idea planted in the consciousness of Anna Jarvis to honor her mother and all mothers. And so in 1907, Anna Jarvis went on to establish a declaration. And in 1914, Woodrow Wilson declared mothers work as a national holiday, holy day, that God has placed within each of us to show up as an answer, to show up as a solution, to show up as peace, to show up as understanding, to show up as a healing, to show up as comfort. Maybe for some of us, our first human contact was not the best of circumstances. But clearly, we were meant to be here because my mother had me at 14. And then she had my brother at 24. And then when he turned one, she gave that baby to me. And I was 11. So it wasn't the best of circumstances, but here I is. <laughs> She did the best that she could, and, and it took me studying this teaching to realize that, because for years I, I, I held some anger, you know, because she was still partying. She was 24, cute little thing. So she, you know, she wanted me out. Here, you take this baby. So everywhere I went, I'm 11, 12, carrying this baby. Couldn't even hopscotch with my friends, because I had this baby, but that's the way it was supposed to be, and I had to make the best out of it. So when I started studying the teaching and praying, God told me, your mom did the best that she could with what she had. And if I was not equipped by God to handle it, it would have went a different way, but God equipped me to handle it. And my brother now, he 50, almost 53, wonderful young man with a family. That's how it was supposed to be. So if we quit looking at the problem so we could see past it to the solution, to the answer, it'll turn out just fine. God will get the glory. Mm, mm, mm. So by every means, however, whatever means we got here, we are here. And it was not to suffer. We're not here to suffer. It was to prove herewith, saith the Lord, that I will take your manger experience and have everything work together for the good. Our parents were the means and the vessels to get us here. Let God take it from there. Walk with God. Talk with God. Feel like you are God's very own because we are. The heart of a woman strength and honor, love, whatever our concerns, God's love is our answer. Let us not continue to miss the heart of a woman. The heart and mind is the central part of us. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Above all else, why? Because God knows that our heart is the core to who we are. The heart is the source of all of our creative, our courage, our creativity, our courage, our convictions. It is the fountainhead of our faith. You say, but Reverend Lisa, you all talk about mind being the well, where we can have what we want and ask for. But remember, the mind can be coerced, manipulated, led astray, and so on and so forth. The heart really tells our story. The wellspring of life within us is the very essence of not just our being, but our very existence. Our feminine heart has been created with the greatest of all possible deities as a reflection of God's heart. The heart of a woman makes me think about the song I just heard when we were coming back from Sacramento. It was written by Reverend Paul Jones. And, it's, and it's, it's, this is for uh, all of us. It says, I've had some good days. 
I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But the heart of a woman affirms, but when I look around and think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. Therefore, I won't complain. He says to us, sometimes the clouds are low. I can hardly see the road. And I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But God knows what's best for me. And although my eyes are weary, they can't see, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. The Lord has been so good to me, more than this old world could ever be. God dried all my tears away, turned my midnights into day. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Even though I've been lied on, thank you, Lord. Even though I've been talked about, thank you, Lord. I've been misunderstood, but thank you, Lord. I've been sick, riddled with pain, but thank you, Lord. The bills are due, don't know where the money's coming from, but thank you, Lord. I, but I, I won't complain. That's the heart of a woman, that faith that trust and belief in a power we don't see, but we can experience. Knowing without evidence is opportunity, sleeping on the job. See, you can know something, but if you don't utilize your knowing, you're sleeping on the job. <laughs> when you know something and you utilize it, that's wisdom. That's creativity. But when you're sitting on your knowing, you sleeping on the job. Reverend Jones and in truth is saying, whatever the world throws, affirm my God is able and will turn it around. For everything is, not will do, for everything is working together for my good, for our families, for our communities. It's up to us to put it in motion. That's the heart of a woman the nurturing, the compassionate, the looking beyond appearances and seeing the power of God at work. Because when you can know it, you can feel it, then you'll be able to see it. It don't just fall from the sky. It ain't just coming around the corner. It has to happen through you, through me. The work of God is utilizing its vessels, and that's what we are, children of God, vessels to express, experience, demonstrate the presence and power of God. Happy Mother's Day, peace and blessings.